Good morning and welcome back to an old haunt of mine. This morning I've come back to the beautiful Rattray Head Lighthouse in Aberdeenshire. Now I've been here numerous times over the last few years and many of you will have seen this location featured on my channel. But despite the amount of times I've come here, I've yet to get a photograph of this lighthouse that I'm really happy with and that I would feel comfortable putting into my calendar. So this morning that's kind of the main aim of being down here and obviously just to immerse myself in the beautiful scenery that's around the lighthouse itself. But also this morning I want to talk to you about why I don't really plan my shoots and what I mean by this is taking this location as an example. Although I've been here many times and I know it very well and I know it works really well at sunrise which is what time I'm here today, what I don't know today is exactly what direction or you know position the sun is going to rise in relation to the lighthouse nor have I looked to see whether the tide is in or out. And there's a reason for this, it's a very common theme in a lot of my photography shoots. I do very little planning and I thought this morning it would be quite interesting to talk you through my reasonings behind this because I know a lot of landscape photographers plan their landscape shoots meticulously but I don't tend to do this and um, I'm going to speak you through why that is this morning and explain my reasonings and thought processes behind it all. behind me right now is pretty spectacular and I should really be taking photographs. I'm sure many of you will be screaming at this camera right now, okay, like take photographs, it's incredible. And yes, it is incredible. I thought it'd be a great opportunity though to tell you right now, while the conditions are beautiful, why I tend not to plan my shoots as much as maybe a lot of other photographers maybe do. And the reason behind this is because you never know what the conditions are going to be like and you never know what nature is going to present to you. And this morning's kind of proved this to me because although I don't know exactly where the sun is rising, I believe it's probably going to be over here given this is where the majority of the beautiful light is. If I pan my camera around right now, you will see that there is beautiful light in all directions where I'm currently standing. Now the best of the light is behind me in the lovely sky that I'm currently showcasing but there's lovely pockets of light all over the landscape around me just now. Beautiful wispy clouds, lovely darker contrasted blue clouds, we've got lovely reflections, um, there's also some nice puffy wispy clouds as well and uh, yeah literally in every direction right now there is some beauty to be found and I think for me when it comes to photography I love to just get out and enjoy nature no matter what happens and no matter what the conditions do or how they present your themselves to you because like I say you never actually know what's going to happen and I actually find that quite exciting. I'd probably call myself an opportunistic photographer. I tend to go out and just adapt to the conditions that I find myself in which I actually think is quite a positive thing to be because it means if I it means I don't have that pressure of meticulously planning my shoots, going out and potentially being disappointed. On a morning like this, I come out with no expectations, not really knowing what the weather's going to do, not really knowing where the tide's going to be, and not really knowing exactly where the sun's going to rise, and I have to adapt to that. And I actually find it to be incredibly uplifting, incredibly exciting and uh, like I say it also minimises the chance of disappointment because you haven't meticulously planned those photographs so you can just adapt to the scene around you and most importantly just enjoy being out in nature which ultimately is uh, you know, one of the main reasons why I do landscape photography in the first place. That sky is stunning though, I think I should probably try and get some shots before it disappears. Thank you. 
timing actually couldn't be better for me explaining to you why I don't plan my shoots. Now, as you can probably see, the sun is rising behind me right now, which is about a 90 degree angle from the, the lighthouse itself. But as you will have seen a minute ago, this direction is not where the light was this morning or is this morning, should I say. The lighthouse itself, although it had some nice wispy coloured bits on that pre-sunrise glow, it, the light was quite flat and very boring. But 180 degrees, so literally the opposite direction to where the sun is rising, is where all the colour and where all the light is this morning. Those beautiful, subtly pinky purple colours and the beautiful colour that is currently caressing the landscape. It's just stunning. Now if I had planned my shoot this morning and said to myself I'm coming to shoot the lighthouse which ultimately of course was my aim but if I'd come here with that exact analogy in mind and I had gone and found a composition with the lighthouse what would have happened is I would have missed all of this beautiful light that's happening on the opposite side of the sand dunes which would have been virtually I think impossible to include in my photograph. I may have been able to have gone along the beach a bit and got a nice side-on shot of the lighthouse with some of the, the pinks creeping into the sides, but ultimately, 100% this morning, the best of the light is in the opposite direction to the main subject matter that everybody comes here to shoot. So I don't plan my shoots meticulously and I don't really think that much about sort of what the tide's going to be doing, where exactly where the sun is going to rise or set, because often the best light doesn't happen in the spot that you expect it to. Now of course there are situations where you potentially need to plan your shoot meticulously. For instance, if you want to photograph mist in a woodland, you want to ensure that the conditions are likely to produce that mist. And equally if you want to get a nice sun rays coming through something like a sea stack or an ancient monument that may only happen in one or two days in the year, then yes, you've got to plan that shoot meticulously to ensure it rises in that exact spot. But for the majority of your shoots, actually the best thing I think to do is just to come out and adapt to the conditions that you find when you get there. And I think this morning has certainly proved that. We've got the sun rising very nicely behind me now. Stunning, stunning, nice golden light. It's not casting on the landscape, unfortunately, but it's lovely to see. But I hope you can see this morning, the best of the light was this lovely pinky purple tones and hues in the sky that was not at the direct point that everybody shoots when they come here. Now I am hoping now that that orange light is going to hit the lighthouse eventually and potentially get some nice shots of it. But ultimately, if I don't go home with any nice shots of the lighthouse this morning, I'm not going to be disappointed because this light that I've witnessed up here in the sand dunes overlooking the fields is way better. The unpredictability of photography is what gets me out time and time again to locations like this. And having the open-mindedness, I think, to adapt to it is where the best photographs are going to happen. I've totally ruined the landscape with my footprints, but I think this gives me actually quite a good uh, opportunity and pointer to end this video on. 
The truth is when you plan your landscape shoots, unless you're going out to photograph something very specific, you will find that if you're somebody who meticulously plans your shoots, often you will go home disappointed. And uh, obviously sometimes you can put so much time and effort into planning a shoot, and sometimes you'll be very lucky and you will get that conditions you want, get that photograph you dreamed of. But the reality of landscape photography or any outdoor photography is that you never know what's going to happen. You never know what the light's going to do, what the weather's going to do, what parts of the sky is going to light up. And uh, although you can, you know, have a bit of an idea by checking the weather and cloud apps and all that kind of things, and the more time you spend outdoors, the better you're going to get at predicting what the light's going to do. The truth is you've got no control over it. And uh, I often find that if I meticulously plan a shoot and I go out to shoot a specific subject such as Rattery Head Lighthouse and I get there and the light's not right I feel so disappointed and I think this morning if I'd come here with a specific sort of challenge of photographing the lighthouse as you will have seen earlier in this video the best of the light this morning was not around the lighthouse and my photographs would have been very flat very boring and I also would have missed the opportunity to utilize the beautiful pinks and purples that we had in the opposite direction. So moving forwards on your own photography journey, I want you to kind of think about this idea of maybe now and again not planning your shoots, just going out with your camera and being open to whatever happens. You'll find when you do this that you're less likely to be disappointed because you've got no expectations. You're also more likely to be open-minded to new photography subject matters. And most importantly, you're going to be more open-minded to just enjoying the whole scene and just uh, you know really immersing yourself in nature which is ultimately what the whole beauty of landscape photography is all about the less you can kind of have pressure on yourself the less expectations you have and potentially the less you plan your shoots the more likely you are to be adaptable to what happens and potentially just sit back and enjoy the beautiful scene around you and the truth is the more that you get out and enjoy nature and actually just the process of being outdoors it actually makes you a better photographer and I'm probably going to speak about that in a future video and also if you sometimes come to a specific location with a specific image in mind you might be greeted with all these footprints or, or other things in the landscape that you weren't expecting that can ruin your photographs and you then have to adapt to other potential photographs. So I hope this video has given you something to think about moving forward in your own photography journeys and kind of open your mind up to this idea of just going out and adapting to the conditions and making the most of whatever the light ends up doing. You may have noticed this video is much better quality than normal. I currently have the Nikon Z6 II on loan for a few weeks. So unfortunately, this good quality is not going to be continuing on my channel, but I want to make the most of it while I have it. Having said that, I really want to invest in a much better vlogging camera for my, my channel moving forward. Forwards. and I've decided that every penny I earn from ad revenue on my channel for however long it takes the next few months up to the next year is gonna go straight into buying myself a new camera to make the quality of my videos on YouTube much better so the best thing you can do to help make that happen is you know continue to watch my videos to subscribe to like the videos and uh, you know every buddy that subscribes to my channel and watches my videos you know the, it, it means the absolute world to me and um, it's the best way that you can support me in my photography journey and also in helping me have the, the money to potentially buy myself a much better camera in the future. It's probably going to take me at least six months to a year to, to earn enough money from ad revenue to be able to, to buy a decent new camera. But your support is very, very much appreciated. And uh, as you probably know, if you'd like to support my lighthouse photography journey specifically or even make a donation to help me get to that target of buying a new camera quicker, you can do so via my Kofi page. Page. No obligation, of course, but for everybody who has donated towards my journey and uh, my mission and, and everything, it means the absolute world to me. Like I, could, I wouldn't be doing this right now if it wasn't for, uh, for your kind support. So thank you very much. Um, as always, I want to say a huge thank you for watching and I look forward to hopefully seeing you all again next time.